to get you into the theaters, and they, then they went all out to make sure that you really had a terrific time once you got there. Now, going to see something like the movie we're going to see now, The Mummy's Hand, really was a total movie-going experience. Now, it might have started during the day when you weren't even thinking about going to the movies, but you might see an ambulance that was circling around town with a sign on it that read, reserved for patrons of the mummy's hand. And you say, hey, that looks good. Why don't I go down and see that? All of this happened before you even got to the theater, of course. Now, when you did arrive, you would find several things that would be maybe in the lobby. First, a nurse might have been stationed there, ready to give first aid to anyone who, who might have been scared out of his wits or had a heart attack from this horrible movie. Then there were pictures on the walls, pictures taken at the premiere when they attached electrocardiographs to audience members to monitor their heartbeats during the scary parts. And you can look at the graphs and see right there in black and white how scientifically scary this movie was going to be. And of course, all of this hype was supported by the ads in the newspapers, which warned that the mummy's hand was not a picture for the weak of heart or cream puffs. This is not a picture for the young, the scary or the nervous, it would say. So if you're afraid of screaming nightmares, stay away. But if you can enjoy thrills and chills and spine-tingling sensations while your hair stands on end, see this movie. Well, who could resist an ad like that? The Mummy's Hand was a sequel to the original Mummy, which starred Boris Karloff, and that had been produced some eight years before. Here are Dick Ferran and Peggy Moran in The Mummy's Hand. <laughs> ¶¶ 